action. All right, great. Um, thanks everybody for joining another episode of the OpenJS Foundation's Cross Project Council meeting. Today is the 7th of July. And um, yeah, let's, let's get the party started. Do we have any announcements to share? Anything to talk about? Um, just a couple. Um, obviously, today is our light day for meetings, um, but next Tuesday, I wanted to make sure everybody had in their calendar, in addition to our um, standards meeting at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern and our CPC meeting at noon Eastern, we're going to have a last collab summit planning meeting at one Eastern um, and that the goal there is just to go through and do a retrospective of the collab summit. Um, thank you all so much for, for um, the work and the support um, for that event. And we wanna just go through that. So if you have feedback on the collab summit in particular, we'd love for you to come to that meeting following the CPC meeting. And um, as a reminder, there's been a uh, small survey going around about that. So any feedback you have is warmly welcomed either on the summit or uh, on the, on the uh, OpenJS world. So that's sort of the big deal. Um, we've also got the uh, uh, Node Security Working Group doing their AMA tomorrow. Um, so if you have any questions or if you wanna help so support and promote um, that AMA, um, please, let us know. That's going to be tomorrow at uh, 9 a.m. PST, I believe. Right, Rachel? You got it. Awesome. Great. Uh, just a else? quick a quick announcement. Uh, so the uh, past few weeks, or past month or so, uh, the website the redesign team was trying to move their bi-weekly meetings to weekly meetings. We have officially done that. Uh, we have gone from uh, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. now uh, every week on Thursdays. So that is a new thing. We It's been two weeks since we have started. Uh, attendance has been a little low just because it's a new new time change. So people may still getting attend, uh, are getting used to it. And also we had uh, open jazz world and things like that. So we did not have uh, some meetings in the middle, but uh, this is a uh, good and a new big step for us just, you know, to get things rolling and in the right direction. Great. Thanks, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, anything else, anything from the board, anybody? Um, I don't have anything. Any updates from the board, although there is one topic we're talking a little bit later about in terms of like the updating the CLA to the Apache Apache style licenses. Um, and the next meeting is, I believe, not next week, but the week after. Let me just double check. So if there is something coming up, um, yeah, it's the week of the 24th. Just let me know that you want me to bring up. Great, great. Uh, week of the 24th. Okay, cool. Um, I, I'm trying to get the board seat uh, stuff done, but I don't know if that needs board approval. I can't remember. But anyway, we'll get into that in a few, I suppose. Yeah, and we don't have uh, to necessarily wait for, for then if it does. So Yeah, yeah. cool. All right, anything uh, else from anybody? If not, we will jump into the agenda. I um, Based on... Uh, Toby's request to put the CLA uh, conversation at the end, uh, or at least second half, I moved it to the end. So the first thing in the Google Doc is the added uh, membership program. This is a pull request that uh, Sarah opened and we've got some commentary on here um, or comments. Uh, Sarah, do you wanna get us up to speed and, and uh, let us know where we're at? Yeah, so the two <clears throat> big outstanding pieces of feedback are the name um, I think uh, it's a good thing to brainstorm. Um, there's a loaded term where it comes to membership that it might be a legal membership. Um, people have suggested the term supporters, which sounds great for me. Um, I don't know if anyone that is better at marketing uh, can come up with something a little more um, catchy, but um, I think that's the big outstanding thing. Additionally, there's also some feedback on closing on making sure that the newsletter continues to be made available for free to all project contributors. To me, that made sense. Um, so uh, that's that's the other outstanding issue. 
uh, also, this is my first time going through one of these. So some um, advisement on how to get these things through the phases would be awesome. So that's a request. Great, yeah, sure, sure. We're happy to help through there. Um, and uh, our, our welcomes do, I wasn't here last week, so I, I, you're a new member, right, Sarah? So welcome. Awesome, thank you. Is that true? Yeah, yeah I think so, thank you. Yeah. Happy to be here. And, and then uh, who else was recently added? Uh, was it Divi? You're, you're a new member as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I got added last week. Cheers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, Sarah, right. what, if I if I could, one question I had on the individual membership, um, I noticed the membership fee um, became uh, a part of the proposal, and I was wondering if maybe, you know, maybe this isn't the right place to to talk about it, but there may be some tooling considerations there, uh, in terms of actually collecting the fee. That can we we might want to maybe <laughs> work through some of the some of the infrastructure discussions because in the past that has been um, has been a question. So. Um, Maybe That's maybe we shouldn't idea. take up the time now, but I'd be interested in discussing that with you. So, but yeah, that Brian, sounds great. your concern's not about how much it is; just can we collect the fee at all? Right. <clears throat> That's exactly it. So, um, it kind of doesn't matter the doesn't matter the amount. It's it's more the logistics on the back end of making sure it all works. And since my job is to make sure all the logistics work on the back end, I would, <laughs> we should probably probably figure out you know just kind of how things would work and and so on. That makes yeah. sense. Would it make sense to make some time with you to talk constraints and kind of sure. um, what needs to be considered? Okay. Absolutely. Anybody else interested in being a part of that? I'm <laughs> interested. I could. I would be definitely interested. I will send out an email. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I, I assume it would just be something like a come to a website page and put in a credit card, right? Um, in theory, that yes. Well, I mean, in practice, that's what it would be. But the the supporting wiring to make that work is is kind of the the question. Yeah, I make. understand. That's that's not that may be more complicated. We we yeah. don't do any any of that anywhere in the Linux Foundation already. Or there are some projects which do have individual you know participant programs. Um, I I don't know. I'd have to ask around and see if they're actually charging. Um, we do have the ability to do, you know, credit card based transactions and things like that. So we certainly use it for, for other things, but um, let, yeah, I think it would maybe just be worth going through and figuring out like how it will all be wired together. Yeah. Great. And so in terms of next steps for this, cause this is stage zero, uh, is this something we can uh, land and then maybe capture like open questions and move to stage one and kind of go along the process? I mean, that I'm makes sure. sense. It's, it's yeah. a good way to learn how to do that in the in the docs. Where's uh, something I can work with on that? That's a good question. I, I, I would hope that it's documented, but I think probably somebody <laughs> uh, somebody could kind of help us work through that in the PR or something. I mean, have, have you read through the proposal process? That Because I think that's the doc. Great. I'm not sure there's too much more. It's kind of like, at each stage, like the moving from one stage to the other, it's really just a rename, like if, unless there's some questions that have been answered or changed, it's kind of rename the, the stage level that's in the dock and move it from one directory to another. Okay, yeah, sounds think, good, yeah. And, I, and, and you may be able to look um, at previous uh, proposals that may be in process in fact, I just clicked to the collaboration network proposal, uh, yeah. Michael, and, and I yeah. got a, a 404 on the README. Um, That's probably because of the rename or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, what I was going to say, uh, Sarah, is that if you look at some of the previous ones, there might be some um, prior artwork in terms of like capturing questions and, and just sort of uh, moving through the process. Yeah, I'll just plant the seed too that we may want to revisit that. Like it, it, there's a lot of document renaming and moving, and like at least on the collaboration network one, people were like, "Oh, I don't even have to look at it until a later phase." And it's like that's frustrating. I think to go through a number of phases and be pushing all these things, and then like people are like, "Oh, I haven't even looked at it yet." So I, I'm almost thinking like it was great when we had contentious things. <laughs> but like for like we don't necessarily need four phases like we, we could probably have one phase where the cpc agrees on it 
and then the next phase where the board has said yes if it needs to review and, and that's it for most cases yeah yeah otherwise yeah, like you know by our current rules it has to wait like two weeks in between and we usually stretch that out and anyway yeah I, I wonder if we should make an issue just to review open proposals and their status and and the proposal process itself and and maybe have an ad hoc meeting to kind of I think I, I can open a, an issue to just review the the proposal process. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. And um, yeah, Sarah, I, if you do run into something, just you can ping me. I I'm pushing that one through, so I can point you to the few things that you you might need to change. Okay, I, I think on this you. one. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying thanks. Okay, on this one, I think that like the the one around whether the newsletter is worth maybe a little bit more discussion here and. Like I think the concern was not only to project members, but just publicly at all. And so I wonder what like the, the foundation marketing people think on that front. Like, is that something they see as a vehicle to get out to a broader audience or would it be okay if it's a, you had to pay and become a supporter to actually get it? Um, I mean, I, I would like to weigh in as the author of that weekly newsletter and um, you know i think really overall the the readership is not too great you know it's about 100 i think um subscribers and um i think people find value in that but um not obviously so much that we've we've hit some kind of you know exponential growth in terms of people subscribing to it so um, I think the proposal to, you know, leave it, leave the subscription settings for the people who have already subscribed, but then to, to make it a perk of, of supportership is a really good one. Um, and, you know, I, I'm a proponent of it. I think it, it is a value add for people who do care and are committed. So um, so it makes it made sense to me, um, but that's my two cents. And yeah, that, like, I, I, you know, if if that sways me in terms of like, if your proponent think that's a great idea, then I'm I'm happy as well. I was just concerned that maybe we were gonna like exclude some people we wanted to get the message out to. So sounds like we that's have not the case. Yeah, we have more broader based communications. We have a an email list of what 28,000 from folks who have registered for our um, activities and Rachel does a great job um, in a very sparing way of uh, making mm -hmm. sure that the broader community is updated on broader foundation things. But uh, right, but again, the jury newsletter is is pretty special. So <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, so I I wonder if it needs to be something that's actually a perk or just something we just do. Um, yeah. Because like I do think it's really useful, but I I can't see someone going out there saying I want to join the foundation so I get the newsletter as a member, right? But like it's just something nice that we do. You know what I mean? I guess that's my perspective. Yeah, I'd hate to limit the audience that can receive our news, you know. So Dylan, were you, were you I, I could have interpreted that two ways. One, which is, yeah, we can give it, give it just to the, the supporters, but it's kind of a nice thing as opposed to promoting it as a perk. And the flip side could be, no, we should actually just do it and make it available to everybody. I, I could, I could argue for either case, but I just don't think that like, I guess my perspective is most people that want to become an individual members do it because they want to help the foundation or the projects that are involved. And like the perks are nice, but like if I was looking at it as a developer and I was like, oh, I get a newsletter, I might, I might not care, or I might actually see that as a negative. Like, great. I have to read something every week. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, until you receive the net newsletter from Jory, you're like, oh, that was really nice and sweet and useful. You're, it, it doesn't like sell on its own. So why, why list it as a big perk kind of thing? You know, I think it's just like 
I don't know if that makes sense, but like, why would someone care to join as a, a supporter or a member? Well, to like be part of it, to help us out, to give us some cool stuff, but they're not doing it because they get these 10 things and they, they care about all 10 of those things. So it's, I guess just try to keep it simple is my perspective. I think this is maybe an opportunity to talk to some folks that might become users, like uh, potential members, right? Um, or maybe some folks uh, that are, me are members or supporters of other OSS foundations to see, to ask them why. I don't know if there's ever been, I don't know, if there may be existing research here of uh, talking to people about why they would want to become members um, or supporters of the OpenJS Foundation. I think uh, it would be interesting to learn the motivators. I think the reason we've been talking about the newsletter this way is um, having exclusive access. Jory puts a lot of work into it and um, as and it's a great newsletter and adding a, letter, a level of exclusivity with a really low price point is uh, can be used as a way to motivate folks to sign up both uh, to the newsletter itself, which right now is um, signed up, you, you sign up if you find the link. So both some exposure for the newsletter itself and for the, um, for the supporter program or membership program. That being said, it might be possible that that's not a motivator for folks. And it's kind of hard to tell without speaking to some people that might be our ideal candidates for something like this. Um, have we ever looked into, into, you know, doing some research around this or talking to folks about um, what would motivate them to sign up for something like this? We definitely talked a lot about what um, might motivate people to join in the past. I don't, I can't remember if we ever went out and did an actual survey or anything like that. Um, but I don't, I don't personally remember, and I wasn't in all the discussions, but I don't personally remember us having done that and documented it anywhere necessarily. But there were, there were like, you know, what kind of things would get us to grow to a large, a large number. Um, and, I, and, you know, you've got some of them like the digital badge and stuff like that, but... Uh, I also think that if we send out a survey, that's going to end up skewing toward people who will take the time to fill out a survey, which I imagine will also be people who will be reading newsletters. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, yeah, grain of salt good there. Point. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I think we could just list it. If it's, if it's going to be exclusive, you could just say, you know, the things you get are blah, blah, blah. We, you know, it doesn't have to be billed as why you would join. It doesn't even have to be like things you only get as a member either like the newsletter i mean i personally think there's we're an open foundation you know on open ideals so we don't want it to sort of come across as like there's tiers of openness and closedness and so i would prefer that everyone that's interested in jory's message be able to get it um but i also understand you want to have some stuff that you know is tangible so i, I could argue it either way just I don't know I would, I would make a huge deal out of like the newsletter being a perk on its own. And like, and then if you try to make it bigger, like, you know, you get more exclusive access to the teams, then it's like, well, wait, we're open projects. So are we really trying to like create a barrier to like our openness as a foundation, right? So just kind of, I guess it just, I don't know how to reconcile that, but that's just sort of what goes through my head. Yeah, well, let's maybe capture these things in, in the, proposal and we can discuss them further in, a, in a, a new PR that's moving to the next stage, I guess, as the open questions. And, um, you know, perhaps we need to um, have a session on, on some of these things to, uh, to, to, to wrap it up. Yeah. Cool. One aspect of this proposal that I think we could cover in this one is, is deciding on renaming it from a membership to a supporter program. I'm in favor of that. Anybody have concerns? No, that sounds good. I like your questions, Toby, too, that maybe they should be uh, made clear in the proposal as well. What, what are the goals and who are we trying to attract? I know we've talked about that some, but um, making sure it's clear, I think, through the proposal might be good. Um, 
but in the sake of time and agenda, we'll call that a wrap and um, move on to the next uh, items. Um, the uh, next one on the list here is the continued CPC current board members. Uh, I think Jory was saying that there was some discussion about this last week. Does anybody want to catch me up or the group up? I think there was an argument that this was a good idea and that we should just do this and like this was a no-brainer and that we should just do it. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm cool it was, but then I believe Miles brought up the point that we may have to keep it open for two weeks per our governance process. Miles is not here though to, to confirm. Okay. And that, was that just like this issue or just the... Because I don't, I don't think this is. A, there's an update. This is just an issue. I don't know if there's a pull request that's associated with it. I think the argument was that this is conceivable to be a governance change. Therefore, we should follow the procedures for that. So I think if we agree on it, still sounding like a good idea, then we can call it done. Okay. And and I don't mind leaving it open for two weeks. It's only a couple more days. So uh, whatever people are comfortable with is cool with me. But I think it makes sense to leave, you know, to things in place. I. I don't know if there's an issue on this, but I um, will have some uh, PR open hopefully tomorrow for the board stuff. Um, and, and then we can kind of move forward on this. I apologize for my delay. Um, it, go ahead. Yeah, if I, if, I must, if I may just add something here, it would be great for issues like this which are sort of straightforward, everyone agrees, it's kind of obvious it's the right thing to do, it's non-contentious, that we could actually not have to have like a complex time-consuming uh, process around them. I don't really know how to do that, but the fact that we've, we're discussing process for something that's so obvious is kind of a problem, I feel. I, I would agree with that, and I would say we that- We do the... have fast tracking. That this is already a thing that we do. The particular thing here is that this can be conceived to be a governance change and therefore that cannot be fast tracked. Right, exactly. Yeah, but it's not even a, a change. I mean, it is in, in, in theory, but we can just yeah. like say, we agree, let's move on and, and, yeah. and try, to, try to just get this other stuff in place. Right. And, you know. I think Miles' only point was that if we were to land something we would the requirements would be that it would be open for two weeks so people could notice and comment yeah and i don't know that we need to actually open. discuss or do anything just give enough people people enough time to to say wait we, a sec we can even leave the issue open until we get the new seats in place you know people elected and everything i don't care it doesn't matter anyway <laughs> i, I don't talk more about it than we needed to <laughs> yeah all right, cool. We'll just, we, we kind of agree. Uh, feel free to object in the issue. I will try to leave the issue open until we get everything in place and, and that's all good. Um, moving on, incubation process clarifications. This is issue 567. Um, oh, it looks like I opened this 21 days ago. Um, did I write all this? I don't even remember this. Uh, does somebody else want to get Get, get some context going here. 21 days feels like so yeah, long. Yeah, sure, I, I can give some context. Um, this is a follow-up on the fact that moving um, AMP and Electron um, through the approval process had some last minute uh, hiccups um, and some lack of clarity around what the process was here of approving an incubated project and moving it to a full, to fully onboard it to the foundation. Uh, given that there were um, already a vote for the charter and there was also the question was, was there another vote that was necessary and can we sort of like organize this, make it clearer so there were no like last minute surprises. I think that was the goal of that issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it was basically let's revisit what we've got and improve or change, tweak, whatever. Yeah, and I, I essentially agree with, with Emily's last comment, which I think is, you know, what I was saying in the description that the charter approval is, you know, explicit, but just having this final step of, of adding it to the, um, you know, to the, to the list um, is a good kind of closure, I think. I, I don't want to make more process and all that other stuff, but it just seems to make sense to me. I think the next step is like a proposal or PR that changes, you know, governance to match 
something yeah. new, right? Yeah, and then we can, you know, discuss the actual details of implementation there if we want. All right, so I'm just going to say this needs uh, uh, PR to this color. I can probably draft something unless somebody else wants to. Uh, I would gladly take your yep. offer to help. Thank you. And yeah, your proposal sounds uh, good. Great. I, I think I, I, I think it sounds like a good way to proceed. Excellent. Thank you, Toby. I appreciate that. Um, next up is the moving security proposal to stage two. Uh, waiting on feedback. What's um, what's the status here? Uh, that one, you know, basically we just need to get feedback from the projects that they're going to be comfortable with the new requirements it imposes. I, that's my my take that we need to do that before we land it as the, at the next stage. Okay. Great. So I think on that one, I, I posted a comment, although it's, there is, uh, so I don't know, Jory, like, do you want to send that out? Do you want me to send it out directly? What's the best way to, to get that feedback? Um, we certainly have some lists to, we can send to all of like the maintainers. Um, okay. I think it would be um, great to know like where exactly you want to get that feedback beyond discussion in an email thread or, you know, so if, if they're in that issue would be ideal, right? Like it says, here's what the requirements are going to be. If people have concerns, yeah. chime in there would be good. That, um, that sounds great. Great. Okay. So does that sound like you're going to send out yes. an email? Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, initial draft of the community board seats. Is that uh, closed? I think that's merged. Yeah. I went ahead and landed that because it looked like it had enough um, approvals, minimum time had passed and all that. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Um, next up is the move the collaboration network to stage two. Uh, it looks like we're maybe waiting on some uh, Feedback from Miles based on some conversation, Michael, you and Miles were having in the issue here on the PR. Yeah, well, in the issue, he posted some comments. I took me a little while, but I finally updated. So just waiting for him to come back on that to see if it addresses his concerns, questions, whatever. Great. Um, next up is the work in progress pull request, uh, Michael, for governance changes on the collaboration network. Uh, yes. Uh, that's Similarly. just waiting on on the other one. Like basically, okay. we need to get the get the proposal through the process, and then separately that uh, those governance changes can be made once that's in place. Great. And then the next issue you've already closed since we have PRs for the yep. other. Uh, yeah, it seemed like we had too many issues talking about the same thing. So. <laughs> yeah. Great, great, great. Um, second director seat is the next issue. Um, you know, this is something that um, I am going to work on um, in terms of clarifying what, uh, what, what these two seats will be moving forward. Um, we've had some discussions and I uh, have notes on all of that and have something started. So I should have a, a PR open this week, uh, definitely before next week's meeting, but hopefully as soon as possible since it is like governance changes and it will take a little bit of time. Um, next is pull request 414 for ad foundation wide copyright guidance. This, um, this uh, still, uh, and this is Toby my, you know, this is my weekly thing that I say <laughs> I will get to. Yeah, I, I feel you though. Don't, don't, uh, we're all, I'm, we're I'm all on holidays right now, my the ocean, uh, so I am not going to be working on this now, but when I'm back, I will. All right, great, great. Excellent. Um, responsible security disclosures. That has the PR um, to move to stage two. Currently waiting on input from projects. Um, and then Toby, the last one on the list here is the CLA, updating CLA to the Apache style, uh, ICLA and CCLA. Yeah, thank you so much for bearing with uh, me and, and moving that to the back. I appreciate it. No worries, it. no worries. 
what's the story here? So I think Brian brought the brought it up. So I think Brian should introduce it. And sure. is there yeah. something that I care about? And I mean, <laughs> I'm the unnamed <laughs> annoying person who brought this up. So <laughs> it's just to be clear, this is there's nothing annoying about this. Uh, you know, Toby was um, glad that you brought this forward because it's it's uncovered a number of other folks who kind of feel the same way. Um, a little bit of history here. So uh, when we're talking about CLAs, uh, JSF required CLAs for all of its projects. Uh, Node Foundation prior to the merger did not. Uh, and our way of addressing that when we did the merger and constructed all the legal documents was to say, uh, a CLA will be approved by the board, which is there for projects to use or not as they see fit. So um, as when we set up the original CLA, it, in, it basically inherited the text of the JSF CLA, which is <clears throat> effectively the text of the DCO with a few changes to it. And um, one of the, the things that was brought up when AMP was coming in, and which also uncovered some discussions with other companies uh, that other, other organizations were interested in this as well, is the idea that if you're gonna use a custom CLA, you're effectively, um, going to be uh, exposing yourself to a fair amount of review by companies who want to participate and it's creating a barrier. And the, uh, one of the ways to, to get around this is to use much more common CLA text. Uh, the, <laughs> the way it was described to me uh, by uh, uh, an attorney was the principle of least astonishment. The idea being, if you're going to use something like this, that it should be something that people recognize. Um, one of the things that we have seen certainly on the Linux Foundation side has been that a lot of projects are adopting Apache style CLAs. Uh, Apache Software Foundation has an individual CLA and a corporate CLA. Uh, these are different from the Apache license, but these are fairly broadly used, fairly well understood, and most importantly, um, the legal counsel who should be reviewing anything that would get signed, uh, they're all going to be familiar with this at this point. So the proposal was, let's take the existing CLA before too many projects get fully onboarded with it, replace it with one that is much more common and is going to be easier to pass through reviews when contributors want their company to sign it on their behalf. Uh, and let's just do that now. And you know, it's one of these things where we don't really get a second shot at this. Uh, if we wait another year to make these changes, then there are gonna be projects which are on the CLA tool, which their contributors are gonna to have to go back and get re-signed. So now is a really good time to bring this up and it's a really good time to address this. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think just to add to that, I think you'd mentioned that there may need to be some change anyway, right, for existing projects. Yeah, so any project which signed or which is using the existing JSF CLA is going to have to re-sign their CLA anyhow, have their contributors re-sign. The reason for that is that the organization that they signed the CLA with no longer exists. So, you know, this is kind of a perfect, this is a perfect time to be having this conversation because, you know, we're going to have to figure this out anyhow. Yeah, my understanding from the issue, Brian, is also that uh, the board is on, on board with this. <laughs> so, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, was asking the CPC for sort of like additional approval and or um, comments about this. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I would like to make uh, um, a specific comment that's an extra ask on top of this. Um, I don't know exactly what the, the well, first of all, I 100% agree with all of what you said there. And I think it, like making that move now makes more sense. And it also has an additional benefit, which is uh, from my perspective, um, when we, when we're handling open source projects like this, the goal is always to balance um, the IP uh, of the project and make sure that we have a project that is clean to use, safe to use for uh, people that want to use it, um, and safe for people that contribute to it to make sure that they can, you know, that their contributions are going to be used in, in the proper way, et cetera. Um, and balance this was um, having something that is contributor friendly and frictionless when people actually want to contribute to their project, right? So you want to have this balance between these two things. Um, and the existing CLA from the foundation um, has the same kind of level of friction as the Apache CLA, right? But my understanding is from a legal perspective offers a lot less protection, notably doesn't really cover uh, issues around patents that well. Um, and so 
uh, from that perspective, it seems very valuable to move towards. I mean, not only is the principle of, of um, least astonishment, um, you know, better fulfilled with like an Apache style CLA, I think it also protects the projects better uh, without in increasing the uh, cost to actual contributors. So I think that's a pretty big um, benefit for the projects. So then there, that's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I wanted to bring up was the fact that um, there was something really interesting about the Apache um, C, uh, CLA, which is that the individual CLA allows um, people to contribute uh, IP that is theirs or that they have received authorization to contribute on behalf of, for example, their employer, if the IP is actually their employer's. Um, and that leads a number of companies to um, um, uh, essentially rely only on the individual contributor CLA um, for um, their, their own open source software. And so my ask would be that if we move towards there, allow projects to choose, to choose whether they want just the ICLA or both the ICLA and the corporate CLA. Yeah, so that, that was brought up in the recent legal meeting. Um, we deferred that to a further discussion. The first question is getting the All right. existing CCLA and ICLA updated, but it, it is definitely, so just you know to be, to be totally uh, open and transparent, it's something which is under discussion. Um, and there are varying, varying viewpoints on this, but- Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, un uh, I understand absolutely. I, my, my point, so, sorry to, I didn't mean to speak over you. Uh, I, I thought you were. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. Done. <laughs> yeah, no, my point was to suggest that, you know, if the, um, if the board was asking the CPC for, for their opinions on that topic, um, for, you know, for our opinion on the topic, that um, the C that's one of the things that the CPC should bring up as, as, as an opinion, because it, it makes the process way easier in, in, in lots of cases and for certain projects. And I'm speaking here on behalf of AMP. For AMP, um, it is clearly a, a benefit um, not, to, not to have to accept corporate CLAs because of the nature of the contributors to AMP. So my, my comment here is um, if the board is asking for comment from the CPC, I would like the CPC to bring that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this has been a, um, a topic of conversation that has that came up in the, uh, the legal call. And then also, um, you know, Robin has mentioned this a few times in the board meetings, just in general, how our goal is to not throw barriers in front of contributors, right? So our goal is to eliminate barriers so that we it's easier for, um, for contributors to be able to participate in the projects. So this is these are all things which are being, you know, they're under consideration, they're under discussion. Um, I will say CCLAs were really hard to manage compared to individual CLAs. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, individual CLAs, we were able to just create a bot and people could connect that to their GitHub account and make that work versus corporate ones typically are signed. And then how do you connect the organization to the people who are approved by that organization? And that's almost always a manual process and a lot more work. Um, but I do definitely agree with aligning with whatever language is going to cause the least amount of friction, just that I don't know that CCLAs work well for us. But yeah, I mean, that, that's okay. the, the language is definitely step one. Um, as far as CLA management goes, CCLAs and ICLAs, I mean, ultimately, it's it's not a decision that I can make. It's not a decision that that really that probably any of us can make individually. It's something that, you know, it's all level of comfort on the part of the legal counsel. Um, that represent the, the contributors and the projects and the foundation and everything else. But yeah, it is helpful absolutely. to have these data points because then we can pass them back in and say, this is, you know, this is what people are thinking. Um, yeah, with Dojo, we made everyone, even if they were covered under a CCLA, still sign the individual one. Mm -hmm. um, it was basically just, they would know that their company was covering them by already having a CCL in place, but we still insisted that they individually sign it to make it easier for us. Yeah. And tooling has improved a bit recently. Um, I mean, one of the things about, so if you're taking, for example, if you do require a CCLA, um, the tool that we're using right now does allow for a company to say anybody in GitHub who's associated themselves with the org is automatically, you know, approved. They're, they're on the automatic approved list. 
a company can also say, whoa, you know, we're going to be more traditional about this and say we want to approve individual people individually. And that's also an option. But, you know, the idea of um, uh, having to um, go and get yourself manually added to a list, that's an option that the company can choose, but doesn't necessarily have to. So from a tooling perspective, I think we can, I, I, I wouldn't make the decision based solely upon tooling because that there are options out there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, you know, this is, this is certainly getting kind of coming full circle back around to this issue. This issue is step one. And step one is basically working on the language. Step two is then, um, you know, what, what does the actual guidance to the projects look like? Um, I will say that if a CCLA is enabled on the project, um, there's nothing in there that would say you can't sign an ICLA. It's more a question of, you know, th this isn't really an OpenJS question at that point. This is a, is your employer comfortable with you signing an ICLA question, which is between, between you and your employer, not between you and the project. So I think there are uh, some other things here that we can also you know, consider as we go forward. Um, but, you know, for now, let just kind of right. focusing on the project right. in hand. I, I right. think at this, sorry, if I just may, I mean, I think I agree with like everything that Brian um, just mentioned. I think though that if the request is what does the CPC think about this mm -hmm. and that multiple members and multiple projects of, you know, actually are saying, well, CCLA have been tough for mm -hmm. us to handle and we don't like it from like a, an operational perspective. Mm -hmm. I think this is the message that the CPC should send back. That's all I'm saying. Still, I don't think there's a lot of controversy even among our legal counsel. It's just Great. taking time. So I no, just- absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. This like in the, for this specific issue, um, the, the request, you know, I, I think, you know, I put on my hat as, as the community representative and said like, from, you know, the principle of least surprise, we should at least go out to the projects. And before we change something, there should be a, do you have any concerns with us switching to the Apache licenses? So I think it, we could probably handle the two things by sending out an email to all the projects that says like, do you have any concerns with us switching to the Apache from the current one? And two, you know, as a second step, we're discussing whether we allow, you know, ICLA alone. What's your perspective on that, right? And that would give us the the answer to the first one, so we could go ahead and change the, the change to the Apache if you know if we get board approval, and to have the data for the discussion that's happening on the other side. Sounds Joe, great. Joe's giving us a one, time check. Yeah, yeah. Time check. Yeah. Import, one important aspect of the previous uh, of asking the projects is: is there a cost here? Is there something that the Apache license that we we do currently get from a project point of view or, over, or from a contributor point of view with the current text that we would not get with the uh, Apache based test text? All right. Well, let's let, let's I'll move the conversation to the issue and then and then uh, we can jump on the private session. Is that fair? Sure. Yep. Time check. Uh, great. All right, cool. Well, uh, actually, one quick thing uh, we missed in the announcements. Fastify version three is out. So that's cool. Um, announcement. Yay. Um, otherwise, let's, uh, let's call it a wrap and jump into private session. Sound good? Sounds good. Great. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have too many people who are non-members, but if you are not uh, a member, if you could drop off, that'd be great. And then we'll uh, we'll discuss some uh, private business. We're still live on YouTube. Yep. All right. Um, Brian, can you do that for me? And then who, let's see, who's on the call who's not uh, a member? Um, somebody's blank here. Maybe they dropped. I don't know. 